I'm Victor, and this is The Junkyard. They say that to control your fear, you must become your fear. They, in this case, might be Batman, but they also say that you are what you eat. So, for this October of the Sea Monster review, I will be confronting my fear of marine life by scarfing down on some sushi. I'm actually a vegetarian, so there's only cucumber in here, but fortunately, I'm also terrified of seaweed. In any case, today we'll be looking at Blood Tide. The movie starts with an annoying couple coming to a Greek island looking for Guy's sister. They find her, but she's loopy and friends with an equally crazy James Earl Jones and his ditzy blonde assistant. I'm suddenly glad of the poor lighting when Jones dons a wetsuit and starts working in an underground cave. He blows up an ancient wall, which apparently held the island's supply of dry ice and, presumably, this movie's camera-shy creature. The next day, after the mentally unstable group has some fun in the sun, the village men tell them that a child was killed and go on with the We don't like strangers round these parts bit. Soon, Ditsy Blonde is attacked by... let's call him Bailey, which the villagers witness. By the way, we're less than two minutes into this review, but more than halfway through the movie. This has not exactly been a roller coaster thrill ride. After the funerals, James heads back down to the cave where someone has nicked his stuff. Later, some idiot kids decide to play Ring Around the Rosie on the edge of a cliff, and one falls off. Both her mother and James swim out to get her, but while the latter is busy with the kid, the former gets chomped. James ducks under the water to find the girl's mother and gets his first glimpse of Bailey. He passes out drunk that night at a party where everyone is filled in on what's going on by the mayor. There's a monster loose, and they have to sacrifice someone to appease it. Now, throughout the movie, there's been this subplot where Crazy Sister has been stripping off layers from an old painting. First is St. George defeating the dragon, the next is someone about to get chomped by a dragon, and now, while the mayor explains that the sacrifice must give herself freely, we see that the third painting has this. Oh, come on, again with this? Look, fish monsters, you like our women, I understand this, but you have to meet us halfway. How about we give you some of our women, you give us some of yours. It's fair, and frankly, once you go scaly, you, um, be coming back daily? Well, Crazy Sister freaks out, and suddenly almost all the nuns, did I mention there are nuns? Are dead. I don't know if she did it, or the monster, but either way, she heads down to the cave to wait for Bailey. James and her brother go down to retrieve her, but as the latter sets some explosives, Bailey attacks. The two get blown all over the cave walls as Crazy Sister and What's-His-Nuts escape, celebrating with... an open-mouthed kiss? God! What is with these sea monster movies? Why are they so twisted? Uh, is it me? Am I picking the wrong movies? I'm seeing most of these for the first time, and... <sighs> anyway, the movie. Not very good. The story was pretty weak, with not much driving it. The two heroes were unlikable, though at least Jones's character was unlikable in a sort of interesting way. And we only see the monster twice in blurry water for about a second each time. <sighs> okay, so no, not recommended. <laughs> this movie has grossed me out so much that I think I need to take yet another bath. In any case, this has been Victor with The Junkyard. Thanks for watching, and have a good day. You know, it would have helped if the protagonist didn't look like an 80s villain. I mean, look at him. He's walking around without a shirt in a nunnery.